What's up, Cornerstone kids? Welcome to Easter Jam. You've been waiting all year for this to come back. It is Easter Jam 2022. We're gonna have a great time. We got games, we got an amazing story to share with you. So and let's get ready together. We are so excited. We know that you have got some cool Easter baskets going on, but this is an Easter basket that we bought for all of you. We are going to open some of our favorite things in our favorite Easter basket. Okay, everybody, next up, it's Mary first time, and it is week three, so I know you've already got it committed to your heart, so let's get into this and let's say it all together. I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. All right, elementary kids, it's time for your memory verse. And I know you all have it memorized, so let's say it together. It is John 16, 33. In this world, you will have trouble, but be encouraged, for I have won the battle over the world. And just a reminder, that's Jesus talking to his best friends, the disciples. Pom-poms. We are going to bounce them on the table and see if they can make them into their egg cartons. And they have to get a ball in each one of the egg cartons to win. So, who are you rooting for, Pastor John Michael? You! Or Pastor Kelly. Ready? And I know it's going to be in like the post setting. Can we get some music? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Did I get them all? Which one did you have left? This one? Yeah. I hope you guys are having a great time at Easter Jam, but really quick, we're gonna check in with our friend, the Easter Bunny, because he was really excited about inviting some of his friends to Easter Jam this year. So let's check in really quick and see if he got anybody to come with him.
how the Easter Bunny got so many friends to come to church for this Easter weekend. So I want you guys, here's your challenge. You need to try to find more friends than the Easter Bunny. He got like six, seven, or eight friends to come with him this weekend. So I want you to go in your neighborhoods, your schools, find some friends to bring with you this Sunday. Maybe you can do more than the Easter Bunny. <laughs> oh, there we go. What's happening, peeps? I'm Jacob. And today we're celebrating a day that is all about hope. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. And something really good came out of the day we call Easter! <laughs> Woo! So, to celebrate, let's do some Easter-themed puzzles. First, an Easter egg hunt. Okay, can you find which Easter egg only appears once? Uh, oh. Is this one up here? No, that one has a twin. Oh, what about that one right in the middle? Not quite. Oh, which one was it? Obviously. Try this one. It's a word problem. <laughs> Javier has 127 jelly beans. Teresa has 323 jelly beans. If Javier and Teresa share their candy, how many jelly beans will they have all together? Okay, this is a math problem. Let's see. 127, 323, that have a three, three plus two, and here's that five, five, zero, five, 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 Eat candy responsibly, peeps. Time for the last puzzle. Scramble word. Okay, these letters spell something. Let's find out what. Therapy apes. Psychologist monkeys. I'm not sure that's a thing. Ooh, ooh, I know. Hey. Rest, Papa. Had a long day. Dad, take a load off. No, that's not it. Oh, it's Easter, obviously. <laughs> Aha! Mm -hmm. Because it's Easter. Aha! Try peeps. Oh, you scrambled words. Don't mind if I do. Mm. 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 <laughs> All right, guys, we are gonna head into game number two. And again, it's Pastor John Michael versus Pastor Kelly. So, are the boys gonna win? No. Or are the boys gonna yeah, win yeah. this morning? Pizza muscles! <laughs> All day long, the pizza and the muscles. So, our next game is called Unbreak the Egg. This is a game where we're gonna see how many eggs you can put together in one minute. And these are the worst, oh. the worst. Oh, no. I, they're so hard. So we're gonna put a one minute countdown and see who can put together the most eggs. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. was 
It fell. Like this one did was complete, but then it fell and broke Excuse open. Me. So does that not count? It's, it's fine. It's fine. You know, if I lose so by one. It's hard to judge. All right, we're gonna see who won this challenge and count out the X. Pastor Kelly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. Twelve. Thirteen. Wait. I didn't know that wasn't right mine. Right there. It was 13. It was right in the middle. Because All right. Uh, Pastor John Michael has 14. 1, 2, 3, oh 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 eggs. Pizza Muscle. Boys win. Boys, fool. Pizza Muscle. Boys, fool. Air guitar. Again, I am so sorry. I guess we are just gonna. Ah! Oh man. All right, guys, it is time to hear our Easter story. And this is a true story from the Bible where we get to hear all about how Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. We are sinners. He sent his son, Jesus, to the earth to save us from our sins. And this is a beautiful story. So grab your Bible if you need some help finding the Easter story in the Bible, then ask an adult to help you. It's totally fine. If you don't have a Bible available, that's okay as well. You can follow along with us as we look at the Easter story, this true story from the Bible today. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapters 18 through 20. In the days before electricity, people were used to living in darkness much of the time, but no one had ever known darkness like the deep dark that descended during Passover week nearly 2,000 years ago. Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem to shouts and cheers. But the religious leaders had been plotting a way to get rid of Jesus, and they had found the perfect way to get to him through one of his closest followers, Judas. What will you give me if I hand Jesus over to you? For 30 pieces of silver, Judas promised to betray Jesus, the light of the world. Darkness was coming. But Jesus wasn't surprised. After a special Passover meal with his friends, he told them, In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. Jesus led his friends across the Kidron Valley to a garden called Gethsemane. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter hurried to step right up beside Jesus. Uh, uh, all the others may turn away because of you. But I never will. In the garden, Jesus pleaded with God in prayer. My father, is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want be done. His friends couldn't stay awake long enough to pray with Jesus. But soon, the dim silence of the garden was broken. The mob of soldiers and officials streamed into the garden, carrying flaming torches. Judas marched right up at the front and led them straight to Jesus. Who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. At first, everyone fell back, but then they surged forward to grab Jesus. Peter tried to defend him with the sword, but Jesus stopped him. Put your sword away. Shouldn't I drink the cup of suffering the Father has given me? Jesus was tied up and taken to the high priest for questioning. Panicked, his friends fled into the darkness, except for Peter and John, who followed at a distance. Peter waited outside in the courtyard while John slipped inside. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? Peter, afraid for his life, froze. I am not. <laughs> inside, Jesus was put on trial and lied about by fake witnesses. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so? 
From now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One. He has spoken an evil thing against God. Outside, others asked Peter if he was a friend of Jesus. Twice more he said, I am not. Jesus' own friends had abandoned him. Even as bleak morning light grew, darkness continued to gather. Because the Jewish leaders couldn't sentence anyone to die, they sent Jesus to the Roman governor, Pilate. What charges are you bringing against this man? He has committed crimes. Pilate questioned Jesus himself. Are you the king of the Jews? My kingdom is not from this world. I was born and came into the world to be a witness to the truth. Everyone who is on the side of truth listens to me. Pilate returned to the crowd. I find no basis for any charge against him. Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate was afraid of the Jewish leaders who could get him in trouble with the Emperor Caesar. So he gave in, and Jesus was beaten. A crown of sharp thorns was pressed into his head, and he was handed over to the soldiers to be crucified. You! Carry this! Jesus was forced to drag the heavy beams of his own wooden cross through the streets of Jerusalem to a barren hill outside the city walls, Golgotha. Jesus' arms and legs were nailed to the rough cross using heavy spikes. Then, the cross was raised up to stand between two other crosses holding thieves. Even though it was the brightest part of the day, darkness began to close in. Must be a storm coming in! Jesus' mother, along with a few of his followers, looked on, their hearts breaking. Around mid-afternoon, Jesus cried out. My God! My God! Why have you deserted me? It is finished. Then, Jesus bowed his head and died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. The darkness of despair settled into the hearts of Jesus' friends. His body was taken to a nearby garden and placed in an empty tomb. A heavy stone was rolled in the way to block the entrance. Soldiers were even sent to stand guard during the long, dark night. But even in the deepest darkness his world had ever known, God was still at work. Early on Sunday, even before the sun rose, Jesus' friend, Mary Magdalene, crept to the entrance of the tomb. But when she got to the entrance, the heavy stone had been rolled away. It's... it's empty. Confused, Mary raced to find Peter and John. They too saw the empty tomb and returned home, still trying to understand. Mary stayed behind in the slowly growing light. Tears filled her eyes as she bent into the tomb to see once again. Oh! Two bright angels dressed in white sat where Jesus' body had been laid. Mary turned back to the garden, her breath catching in her throat. The rising sun nearly blinded her, but she could see a man standing there. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? At first, Mary thought, this must be a gardener. But then he spoke again. Mary. Teacher! It was Jesus, alive! Mary threw herself at his feet. As the light grew around them, Jesus told her, Do not hold on to me. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary raced to find the others. I have seen the Lord. Through Jesus, God had defeated death forever. We can hope because in the end, darkness will never win. So that story right there is the reason we celebrate today on Easter Sunday, that Jesus not only came to this earth, lived a perfect life, he did some incredible things, but he died for our sins, and most importantly, he rose again. He conquered death, and because of that, when we ask Jesus into our heart, we now can have a relationship with him and spend eternity with him in heaven. Whether you're here in person or you're watching online right now, just very briefly, I wanna pray what we call the sinner's prayer with you, where we just admit, hey Jesus, I'm a sinner, I've done some things, that are wrong, I wanna get rid of all that. Today, I wanna to dedicate my life to you and ask you into my heart. If that's you this morning, I just ask that with me, you bow your head, and I'm just gonna lead you in a very simple prayer this morning. So let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for dying on a cross for my sins, for my mistakes, for my mess-ups. And today I ask that you come into my heart, that you be the Lord of my life, and you help me every single day to serve you, not only through what I say, but also what I do. Help me each and every day to trust in you with all my heart. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Well, hey, I just want to say, if you prayed that prayer, awesome. That's what Easter Sunday is all about. And moms and dads listening, we do have a little QR code that you can scan right now that has a salvation packet for you so you can walk through what salvation means with your child at home. Got it. You ever wonder why we celebrate Easter every year? Here's why. When sin entered the world, people and God were separate. It was easy to see how far apart we were. People tried to make it up to God, but the price was too steep. So, God came up with a plan, a plan to save our hearts, a plan to save the whole earth. God's plan was to send Jesus, his one and only son. Jesus died to erase all of our sins from the past and all of our sins in the future too. A price we could never repay. Jesus died because of his great love for us. And we celebrate Easter because we remember that Jesus' death wasn't the end of the story. Jesus came back to life to give us hope so that when we believe, we'll have a relationship with God that will last forever. He rose from the dead to show that he's more powerful than any fear or any problem we may have. He rose so that we would know this one thing. Whatever happens, remember Jesus is alive. So, no matter what's puzzling you, you can be sure that Jesus is with you. He loves you and he's still very much alive. Happy, Easter, everyone. What? Oh. <laughs> or eaters, I guess. Happy eaters. Let me just, uh... Happy Easter, everybody! And just for good measure, one more of these bad boys. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for spending Easter Jam with us. We want to give parents some talking points this week, and we want to make sure that you paid attention during Easter Jam to our true story from the Bible today. So we're going to ask three questions, hold up three fingers, and see if you can get these answers correct. Question number one, what is so special about Easter? That is true, that Jesus came back to life. Did you know he is the only person who ever died, came back to life, and then never, ever died again? That is what makes Easter so special. And that's what makes our God different than all other people. He is the one true God, the only one, because he's the only person to ever die, come back to life, and never die again. All right, question number two. Who did Jesus come to save? That's right. Jesus came to save sinners like you and like me. He loves us so much that he died on a cross for all of our sins. Good job. Question number three, who does Jesus love? That's right. He loves everyone. He loves you, he loves me, he loves your mom and dad and cousins and brothers, everybody in the room he loves. Thank you guys so much. You did such a good job today. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for checking out Easter Jam. I hope you have an awesome rest of your Easter Sunday.